Hey guys, what's up? It's RJ here, Old School Duel Talk, come on with another deck profile. Odd Eyes, Performer Magicians, or my, odd, my new Odd Eyes build. And this is a build uh, that I'm going to play for a while. Um, and if it, if it gets dead, I'm literally just going to stop playing the deck. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to jump right into it. Um, so yeah, we're we'll start with the monsters like normal. Uh, I play three. Odd Eyes pulling Pendulum Dragon. He is the main focal point of the deck. Um, he... Drops for game all day, every day. Uh, OTK. I can OTK like a motherfucker. Uh, it's... That's why I run three. I mean, you might see some people that say run two. But because of some other support that came out, uh, definitely play this. If you're doing... If you're doing Odd Eyes Magicians uh, with Splash of Performa Pals, uh, definitely play this card at three because it drops game all day. Uh, next card I run is still running the three Oaf Dragon. Uh, Oaf Dragon, you, you know what's funny? I really don't use Oaf Dragon's effect that much. Uh, it's Pendulum effect. I use its on-field effect a lot, and then I go into uh, overlays, honest, like, actually, I actually overlay with this guy now. Um, but yeah, I don't use his Pendulum effect all that much, but his on-field effect is still very alive. Just for the fact that you can add uh, Magicians and Odd Eyes Monsters. Just, just like for that fact alone, which is amazing. I love it so much. It's just amazing. Next card I run is still running the three dragon pit. Um, I mean, it's not your main eight, uh, eight scale monster, um, but it is still very important for the deck for the fact of uh, it pops your spells and traps. You don't always have a magician. I mean, I can't say you don't always, but there's it's like a it's about a 50-50 shot that you might not have a magician monster for your low scale. Uh, but the deck is pretty consistent to the point where it's uh, it's barely for me where it's a rare situation where I actually need to deal with back row just for the fact that this deck spams so fast. So that's always fun, and I still play the one pit, um, not necessarily for popping monsters. But uh, a four. It is a four because I now overlay fours in the deck. Um, so it is. It's a four. <laughs> um, next card I run, which is a very. This is your important low scale um, person, and this is like kind of the main person you. Uh, if Oaf Dragon is in the Pendulum Zone, it's more than likely to get him back. Um, Timebreaker Magician. I'm running one. Um, it protects your Pendulum monsters on field. So, which is super duper important. It is like majorly important. So, the f that that is definitely uh, yes, a must have to. I would definitely would not say run two just because uh, you can search him back with oaf because you run three oaf. So you know you can always search him back. But if you want to try two, go ahead and try two. Just me personally because of consistency and I need other cards in the deck. One is perfectly fine because you can search it out with your pendulum call. Plus you can search it back if it hits graveyard. Or it hits extra deck with your Oaf Dragon. I play one Yankee Magician. Uh, kinda, I run Yankee Magician for the uh, Dark or for the Odd Eyes Rebellion, um, but I rarely go. I rarely go into him with Yankee Magician on field. Uh, so I mean, yeah, I mean, there's that, but it's more of a. It's more of because I would prefer to run Double Mist Valley, um, but I don't have Mist Valleys. And Mist Valleys are expensive. <laughs> so I just, like, I don't have Mist Valleys. So I uh, substituted one Yankee Magician in place. So now I have a total of seven, uh, sevens. Seven level seven monsters. Um, but it's also its on-field effect is really good against Cosmos. Which is, yeah, so you just kind of just say, no, you can't do an effect. Uh, and then obviously I run one Wisdom Eye just for, I wish it was back at three. But it at one kind of does hurt. Uh, if it was at three, I feel like it would go faster. I mean, if I had three, I'd still be able to run the very first build I posted, and the, the one that I bought to I I brought to regionals. Um, but yeah, the one, still playing the one. It's still very important in the deck, kind of sorta. I rarely see it honestly, just because it's at one, and I rarely search it because I have tons of other cards that I want to search. So at one, it's not too big of a deal, but it does when you do see it, it does come in handy. 
And I play one Noble Dragon Magician. I don't play the Tuning Magician. I've tested the Tuning Magician. It does work well with the deck, but it's just, it's not something I need to, I don't really need to go into eights. I don't really need to sink into other eights with it. So I just play the Noble Dragon so I can go into Meteor Burst and other, and uh, Odd Eyes Dragon, or yeah, Meteor Burst Dragon. Meteor Burst and Black Rose. Uh, whoa, whoa, my bad. <laughs> so that's it for the en for the Magician uh, engine. So we're going to move on to the Performa Pal engine. It's the small splash I play. I played two Lizard Draw. I was playing three Lizard, uh, three lizard Draw. Uh, I would suggest playing three Lizard Draw if you don't have an Upstart or a, uh, or a Raigeki. Um, so two Performa Pal Lizard Draw is really good. All it is is just draw power. That's all Lizard Draw is. Um, and then obviously I play the Skull Crow Bat because I can search my Performer Pals, I can search my Magicians, and I can search out my Odd Eyes Monsters, which is amazing. I love this card so much. I'm so happy it came out. And then I play one Performer Pal Silver Claw, uh, mostly for Force. I really don't get him on field. He's more of a like a, a ditch target if I need to. Um, and then I play one Performer Pal Magician Pendulum Sorcerer. Now. <laughs> Only reason why I play one, mostly because I only own one, but the reason why I play one, um, it's yeah, it's mostly because I only own one. But at the same time, one honestly, I think it works out really good. I mean, I'm not playing Draco Pals, or I'm not playing like the Dracos in this build. Um, like I'm not paying. Okay, I can't say I'm not because I'm. I'm gonna tell you now. I'm playing one Draco monster. Um, but I'm not playing the Draco Pal engine, so blowing up stuff is really not all that important. Um, it's mostly just a search out. Uh, he's kind of like a desperate need search out, but I use him for fours as well. I play one monkey board, a uh, performer pal monkey board, um, because I can only play one, but it's really amazing for the next card that I'm going to talk about that really rounds out the deck, and I'm so happy that it's out. But the one monkey board is very, very amazing. So that's it for the performer pal engine. Now, for the card that really rounds out the deck and definitely is the is the big reason why I run the Performer Pal engine. Performer Pal Odd Eyes Unicorn. This card hardcore rounds out the deck so much. Now, let me tell you what its effects are. I don't use its on-field effect, so I'm not really, like, its on-field effect, you rarely do. Like, you rarely even see him on field. Um, so, I really would not focus on the, on the on-field effect. I mean, it can be useful, but I really... Don't, I don't, at least I personally don't get him on field. Um, but his pendulum effect is just amazing. Now I'm just, I'm going to read it off to you guys. Once while this card is in your pendulum zone, uh, when an odd eyes monster you control declares an attack, you can target one other performer power monster you control. That attacking monster gains attack equal to the original attack of the targeted monster until end of battle phase, even if this card leaves the field. Now let me explain what that means. This card specifically, so if the one that is in the pendulum zone, which means you can definitely blow it up and still have the one and still have an extra one in hand for later, so you can get two off. Um, you can it's a minimum of two per deck. Um, but you can definitely bring stuff back and blow stuff back or use it again because Oath sends performer power monsters back, right? No, it does not. It does not target performer power monsters. I can't remember. There was something that I used that brought it back. I can't really remember. It doesn't really matter. But this card definitely rounds out the deck to a maximum potential. And this is what causes OTKs. Because you got your absolute your absolute odd eyes. You got your meteor odd eyes. You got your vortex. You got your odd eyes rebellion. Uh, you have so many odd eyes of monsters. Plus you have odd eyes himself. Um, to just deal so much damage and just target it. Performer pals, you have so many performer pals to target. Like you could easily silver claw on field for a lot of damage. You could skull crowbat for a lot of damage. You could uh, I think that's about it for the powerful ones. But you have a lot of different. You have a total of four, five different performer pal monsters that you could target and give attack, and it all gives a least a minimum of a thousand because monkey board is a thousand, nothing over a thousand. Um, but you can deal a lot of damage with this guy and definitely go for OTK. Um, and it's just, overall, it's just an amazing card. And you can search him out. You can search him out for Performer Pal searches because he's a level 1. So you can Monkey Board search. Um, you have, 
you have Skull Crobat Search, you have what else is it? You have Pendulum Sorcerer Search, and I have one more card that will definitely give you the search, but we'll get into that when I get to the card. But just like I said, overall, Performing Pot Odd Eyes Unicorn is just an amazing card, and it definitely rounds out the deck to to an amazing potential. Um, I would not suggest running three just because I'd personally rather search Unicorn out, rather uh, see it or like draw into it in the beginning of the game because I have other stuff that I want to see in Pendulum Zone before he hits field. Because uh, you, you definitely can, uh, you can honestly FTK if you really wanted to. You could totally FTK. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just, uh, it's just an amazing card. If you draw the right hand, you definitely can FTK. Um, but you can definitely set up, deal a lot of damage one turn, next turn OTK. Um, and even if you wanted to, honestly, you could stall. You could set up stall and then OTK next turn. Um, but yes, I play three Magispector Unicorn Kieran. I play three uh, just for the fact of why not. I mean, I can play, I can overlay him with Oath Dragon for sixes. I can overlay it with itself for sixes. Plus, its effect is amazing. So, why not max it out at 3? Uh, and then I play one Luster Pendulum, the Draco Slayer. This is the one Draco monster that I do play, just for the sync of 4, and its Ignister is just amazing. It's just an amazing synchro monster. So, I definitely suggest playing it. Um, and also, you can blow up stuff and do some do some damage and do some other stuff with it, too. And um, then I play, for the last Pendulum monster in the deck, I play one Archfiend Eccentric. Yeah, I know it's a common. Gross. Uh, but, amazing card. Uh, you def I definitely suggest playing it, even if you're just playing like Draco Slayers, or Dra Draco Pals. Uh, I definitely do suggest playing it because you can still do your Synchro Summon, or your um, your Pendulum Summons with this guy still in the Pendulum Zone. But he pops monsters on field, pops Pendulum Zone, or pops Spells and Traps, right? Pops Spells and Traps when he's on the Pendulum Zone. So overall, it is just an amazing card, and I definitely suggest running it. Then I play one Maxi. I only own one Maxi, so I only play one Maxi. Or else I'd play two Maxi. In this deck, at least for this deck, I'd play two, uh, just because against Cosmos you can get like hella draw power against as long as they don't OTK you. Um, BA you can get hella over or hella draw power. A lot of different decks you can just get hella draw power. Monarchs not so much. XYZ Monarchs not so much. Uh, but other decks you can just psh, draw for days if they take the maxi challenge, unless Cosmos OTK you. Um, which is saddening. Uh, moving on to spells. I play three Pendulum Colleges because you need the search power. You need to search out your Pendulum Monsters or your Magician Monsters just for, you can summon out, uh, if you, if you already have your Pendulum Zone built up where you can summon, uh, sevens and stuff, um, search out Dragon Pit and Yankee Magician overlay for seven. Boom. Look at that. Uh, then I play, uh, two Skyris. Uh, Skyris is just an amazing card to play. I play it all day, every day. Um, yeah, that's that's it on it on the Sky Iris, really. Um, yeah, the Sky Iris is amazing. I don't play terraforming, um, even though yes, Sky Iris is an important card to the deck because uh, it searches out your stuff immensely. It searches out odd eyes monsters like crazy. Uh, I probably should play a terraforming, um, but I don't really know what I could take out. I mean, I probably could take out the Luster Pendulum for a terraforming, but Luster Pendulum comes in handy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you really want, I mean, like, that's probably what I'll end up doing if Sky Iris becomes an issue and I end up not seeing it enough. Um, but I have yet to, like, not see Sky Iris. Because Sky Iris protects your Pendulum Zone monsters. Plus, as well, it, you blow up stuff and you search out your Odd Eyes monsters. Like, you can search out Odd Eyes Pendulum. You can search out, if I was running the Fusion, I could run out the Fusion, which is something I do want to play, which when I do get the card, and there's other cards I want to get for the deck, and I will definitely do an update deck profile. You can search out the Unicorn as well. That's just a, that's the other card that I was talking about that you can search, use to search out Unicorn Sky Iris because, like I said, Sky Iris is just such a big search card for the deck, yet I am not running Terraforming. <laughs> Probably should. Uh, one Raigeki because Raigeki, because why not? Uh, one Upstart Goblin. Um, I could also take that out for uh, terraforming if you really wanted to. I'm, I'm either going to end up taking Luster Pendulum or Gob or Upstart Goblin. Um, but Upstart is just so I can Upstart. Um, yeah, that's some spells. We're moving on to traps. Traps are pretty simple and easy. There's a, f a five card trap. Um, it's a different... It's probably a different... Uh, 
trap lineup that you'll see for any other out eyes decks, but it definitely it works for me. I have no problems with it. Two Fiendish Chain because I want to just negate effects like crazy. Um, Drowning Mirror Force because if you saw my pack pull, then you definitely saw my Shining Victories pack pull. You saw when I pulled this, which was an amazing pull. I pulled both of these. Amazing. But anyways, Drowning Mirror Force does come in handy because sometimes you just draw on a Drowning Mirror Force and you don't really have anything to summon on field. So Drowning Mirror Force is just amazing. Yeah, you could you could argue you could run any other Mirror Force um, for just better, uh, just for better, just in case you want, just in case you don't have the absolute dragon on field, um, but you still want to negate, or you still don't want attacks to go through. You could still run that, honestly, if you really wanted to. But I just prefer Drowning Mirror Force, uh, just because it comes in handy. It stops the direct direct attacks and sends everything back to deck. It just sends the monsters back to deck. Um, and one Solemn Morning, just because Solemn Morning, because I want to negate all summons. I want to negate Inherit summons too. So go fuck yourself. <laughs> That takes it for the main deck. I don't have a side deck or else I would do the side deck. Um, but there's no side deck for it because, because I'm not playing the deck competitively. It, yes, I probably could play this deck competitively, like at big events and stuff. Just I don't. I have other decks like my Quantums and my Monarchs, which I will be doing a deck profile next week, more than likely. You'll see it next week. If not the week before <laughs> or the week after. But you definitely will see a Monarch deck profile uh, coming up really, really soon. Uh, I play two Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon. Some people might argue only play one. Basically, this card, if you don't know what it is, it is a giant utopia. It's a giant utopia which you can make stronger with Unicorn on field, um, which definitely what I use for drop for game all day, every day. Uh, but I play two just because, like, when you see it, like, when it hits field, people will either just negate the summon, so the summon never happened, or they just get rid of it really fast. They'll take it or anything else like that. I don't want them to take it, so a lot of people will try to get rid of it really fast without its effect, its destruction effect to summon an odd eyes monster from extra deck, uh, which is something that I don't want to do. Which is something that I kind of like to see happen in the deck. So playing two for me and for the build or the playstyle of the deck, uh, it's just I see it important to play two. Uh, one, Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon, just because Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon is just amazing. Yeah, I have the Yankee Magician, so you could definitely summon its effect and make it go off. Plus, you also have Absolute Dragon to make its hit field 2 and just drop for game hardcore. Uh, one, Ruin Eyes Vortex Dragon, which, oh my god, I kind of, makes me kind of want to run 2, just because it's just an amazing card. If I ran Odd Eyes Fusion, I would definitely run this at 2, but I don't. I only play the Absolute Dragon uh, to summon it out there. Um... So I don't play it at two, uh, but if I if I when I do get the Odd Eyes Fusion, definitely see this card at two, just because it's such an amazing card. And with all the Pendulum monsters that you'll probably see on Face Up on Extra Deck, you can just negate everything. They could just be like, it's really good against Cosmos. Just throw it on field. Freaking Dark Destroyer can be like, oh, I'm gonna pop it, and you're just like, no negate effect. Okay, I hit Graveyard. Now you gotta summon something else, or you could just be like. Okay, a uh, Cosmo effect when it's banished. Say no. It's just such an amazing, well-rounded card, and its defense is thrown in defense, and you can just sit there. Uh, and the last Odd Eyes monster of the deck is Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon. Let me just tell you, this card itself can drop game. So it's amazing card, just amazing card. Um, one Black Rose Dragon, like I said, to Nuke Field. One Ignister. Um, if I do end up taking the, uh, the Draco Slayer out, the pendulum, Luster Pendulum out, for, and then Draco Slayer, you're probably going to say goodbye, and then that's probably what I'll probably end up boosting up. Because if I do run, if I do get the Odd Eyes Fusion and a Terraforming in the deck, then Upstart and Luster Pendulum are going to be gone, which means I can take this out and throw in my second Vortex. Look at that. Oh, excuse me. And then one Magis, or one... Majester Paladin, the Ascending Draco Slayer. I play him um, for to search out Kieran because I have no way to search out Kieran, and Kieran is such a good card in the deck that you want to see it. So playing this guy is definitely your search for Kieran. More than likely, you're gonna play this guy, uh, activate effect, end phase, search out Kieran. Uh, I play one Castell just because I want to say goodbye to everything, uh, and it's really amazing for mirror matchups because you could just uh, be like Castell, put your Absolute Dragon face down. You don't get effect. Plus, you can't activate. Uh, I can't negate my attack. One abyss dollar because you want to say no to graveyard effects. Like, 
uh, against uh, Monarchs and uh, BA for sure. Uh, that's your big card to just say no to Graveyard Effects. One Swordbreaker. Now, I know what you're thinking. What is a uh, Swordbreaker doing in this deck? Swordbreaker, honestly, is amazing. I want to change it to something else. I'm not quite sure. Um, uh, Norden, or not Norden, Noden, uh, or not Noden. What is the name of that card? Or B Norbido, or something like that. It's a spellcaster that's sixes. Uh, you drop that, and you drop Sky Iris on field, and you're just dropping for game. Like, you just locked them down. You're just like, what am I going to do? Uh, but Swordbreaker is honestly a good substitute. Um, if you don't have the Norbido, um, just because you can just detach, declare any type, and just start running into monsters. Poof. Like, it is amazing against uh, Cosmos. You can just be like, okay, machine, bye, bye, freaking Dark Destroyer. Um, and then I play Utopia Beyond. What is this doing in there? Because I can OTK like a motherfucker with this card. This card is just so amazing. Synchros or XYZ summon, drop everything to zero. Boom, punch. It, that's it. Boom, game over. Uh, and then one, Rud Eyes, Flare, Metal Dragon. This card is a hit or miss, honestly, with me. I mean, some people might argue and be like, oh, play it, oh, play it. I can honestly deal without it. I mean, it's definitely a card I could definitely, like when I was, you know, before when I was playing old Odd Eyes, I thought this card was amazing because someone dropped it on me and they just, boom, 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 and I just took so much damage because it took me so much to try and get rid of it. But in this build, now that I own it and I play the card, it just, I don't, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know when to go off with it. Some people are like, oh, go off with Red Flare, and I'm like, no, not go off with Red Flare. Do something else to deal with, to deal more damage, and and then other times I'm like, nah, I don't need Dark Flare or Red Flare, and then I summon, I should have summoned Red Flare, and I'd have just dealt so much damage to him because they had would have had no way to get rid of that. Um, and then I play one big guy, obviously, because I want to take their monsters and just punch them with their own monsters. And I play, I still play the one Draco Sack because Draco Sack is just. Why not? Mecha Phantom Beast Draco Sack. Stall them out. Play psh, defense mode. Summon stuff out. Psh, deal with it. But yeah, that's it. And also I can use it for a pop card. Overlay for 7. Uh, target itself. Blow up itself if I really need to. And I don't have the space to summon the tokens. Um, but yeah, he's just he's just in there for popping. Um, so yeah, that's really about it. That takes care of the entire deck profile. Um, yeah, that's... Definitely. I love this deck. I'm so happy I'm able to play it again. It's actually really good. Uh, I suggest building it. If you want to play competitively, definitely go for it. Um, pl build your own side deck, go, though, because I didn't have a side deck for this card. And definitely, definitely I expect an update when I do other other order, when I order the other cards for it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you really love this deck, I definitely suggest playing the deck. Um, it's an amazing deck. Actually, me, uh... Yeah, whatever. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my other videos. Um, then yeah, if you want to see a, uh, if you want to see how the deck is played, check out the video or the link or the, what is it, the uh, duel uh, that I did of uh, Wanjo Pro against Black Wings with this deck. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Have a wonderful, beautiful night, day thing or whatever.